Hello, everybody. Luke Shoulder. Peter Grouse, Rebecca Tyler, Virginia. One of the more common questions oftentimes we get asked is, when it comes to applying a fungicide, is there a better method or are one of these methods more effective than the other? I'd bet if we think about all the different options that are out there today, many of us could think of advantages and disadvantages in each and every one of them. That said, if time or equipment isn't a limitation, is there one or the other that tends to be more effective and ultimately leading to higher profitability? So 2024 marked the second year in which we evaluated each of these different types of application methods. And the results may surprise you, beginning with the data you see in front of you. So this is the results from our PFR locations where we can control every single variable, including soil type, because our fields are only about 400 feet long. But there's two years worth of data, multiple locations compared to ground at 20 gallon the acre on the left versus a drone at two gallon the acre. And as you can see by the data in front of you, even though we were only utilizing 10% of the overall spray volume, the drone was nearly three times more profitable. Now, what about coverage? This is looking at the, the use of water sensitive paper clipped to the ear leaf. The ground application at 20 gallon the acre, you can see about 7% coverage, indicating by a significant amount of purpling. The drone application, significantly less volume and also significantly less coverage in terms of percentage. But one thing to keep in mind, this is something we mentioned a year ago that even though there's significantly fewer drops and those droplets are smaller on the right, those droplets are also 10 times more concentrated, which may be contributing to the results you've previously seen. What also may be contributing to the, the results is something that we thought of very recently, and it's, it's that effect that the con more concentrated solution has on pH. Generally speaking, with crop protection products, the lower the pH, the more effective they are. But this is looking at the effect that the highly concentrated Mirvis Neo had on our spray water pH. As you can see, the water alone was nearly a pH of eight, seven, nine. But look how much more dramatically that highly concentrated Mirvis Neo at two gallon the acre dropped our pH, nearly two points, while at 20 gallon the acre, it only dropped it about a point, actually a little less than a point. And here's why that matters. It's the stability or the half-life. Half-life is, is just like the term means. It's, it's the point at which our environment uh, dilutes that persistency down to about half of its original persistency, okay? And when we look at fungicides, just look at how much more stable they are as that pH drops. So as you move from left to right, the pH goes down. And as you move from left to right, the stability goes up. You look at the, the volume of time that that product remains at least 50% of its original value at a pH of seven, it's three hours while a fungicide in a solution of pH of five is fairly stable or a 10 hour half-life, giving us significantly more time for that fungicide to actually enter the leaf and perform its work or do its job. Now you may be saying, well, I own my own ground rig. Why wouldn't I just over, you know, drop that spray volume very, very uh, significantly? And we've actually disproved that. You can see by the data in front of you, 15 to 20 gallon was the most profitable when we're utilizing a ground rig. And what we have to keep in mind the one thing we can't mimic with a ground rig versus, say, a drone is that downforce component. I flew a drone, a, a DJI spray drone at Technology Days over the course of three days. And we put it, you know, we, we flew it about six times a day. And by the second day, flying it up over the corn, allowing it to hover in the same spot, which isn't occurring in the field, it actually tattered the corn to the point it looked pretty bad. Really demonstrated just how much downforce that that drone has that we cannot replicate that with a ground rig. Now let's move to some on-farm research. This is some on-farm research primarily out of Illinois and I'm going to tell you as you're looking at this data which it's indicated is the state of Illinois particularly where these plots were were conducted and these studies were conducted had very little rainfall particularly at the beginning of grain field the last two years where the disease was and, and the disease pressure was rather low and as you can see you know, none of these met application methods really made us much money, but the drone actually was the most positive in a low disease environment. Now we'll move to the incorporation of a helicopter. So helicopter, ground, drone, on-farm research that was primarily done out of Iowa where they did have rainfall and the disease pressure was significantly higher. And as you can see, the ground and the drone were the most profitable, but again, the drone was actually the most profitable on this on-farm research. And what probably surprised me the most was what you're looking at here. And this was fungicide work uh, done comparing 20 gallon with the ground again and two gallon with the drone on PFR farms and soybeans. 
the reason I'm so surprised, if we think about 15-inch soybeans, and this was a combination of 30s and 15s, but a lot of 15-inch soybeans, at R3, that canopy can be rather dense and thick and hard to penetrate. I think this further exemplifies the downforce of the drone is rather significant. So which is the most effective or in summary, it's the application method that you can get done the most time. We know that outside of extenuating circumstances, for instance, like tar spot coming in very, very early, that an application made at R1 in corn, an application made at R3 in soybeans is going to be the most profitable. So the most timely application is likely to net and yield you the most profitability. But don't ignore these drone applications. We're only two years into it. We're going to continue to evaluate these studies, but I don't think they can be ignored as to their potential um, applicability out in the field. While they have limitations as far as overall acres, they can they can uh, get done in a day. If we consider the effect they have on concentration, product persistency, and that downforce, they look to be a viable option in the future. So as always, if you have a question around this topic or any other, don't hesitate to give us a call. We appreciate you tuning in. Have a great day.